Let us all be on our feet in this wonderful and blessed morning. Well, it is a warm welcome. Welcome you all in the presence of the living God. It is an honor and a privilege that uh, once again we are gathered in his presence. And uh, at the same time, we also want to give a warm welcome to all those that are here with us for the first time. Welcome in the house of the Lord. Greetings to all those that are connected with us through our social media at this morning. It is an honor. We want to say thank you. Stay connected because Jesus has something for you at this morning. He will not let you go empty-handed. And uh, we also want to encourage you that as the message is being preached, uh, please do us a favor by sharing as much as you can to all those that are connected to you as well through social media platforms so that each and every one of us will benefit what God has prepared for us at this wonderful day. And uh, also at the same time, I want to encourage all of us that uh, when the message is going on, let us stay connected. Let us follow the preacher. Your amen, your hallelujah, all your comments are welcome. Glory be to God. Let us all bow down our heads as I shall open up in prayer. Mighty God and Heavenly Father, we want to say thank you at this blessed morning. We are privileged, oh God, that we are in your house. And our hearts are rejoicing. Because once again, we are connected to you. Once again, we can fellowship together. Once again, oh God, we can hear your voice. Here is our prayer before thee, oh God, at this morning. May you anoint the speaker of the word. We pray for revelation and utterance from above. We are committing our worship team before you, my father. Anoint the lips of clay. That is, they shall lead us in worship at this morning. May they be anointed indeed. We pray that the spirit of the living God will direct them, O God. We also pray for our time of giving that we shall offer it from the bottom of our hearts. And we boldly declare that Jesus is Lord to our gathering. In Jesus' name we pray and we all say amen. amen. Hallelujah. We've come to praise the name of Jesus this morning. We're all excited to be in the house of the Lord. Let us praise him. Let us clap our hands. Let's give him a sound of praise. For the heavens will open and his mercies will come down this morning. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. <coughs> Come on, let's clap our hands.
fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadow you win every battle nothing can stand against the power of our god and almighty fortress you go before us nothing can stand against the power of our god you shine in the shadow you win every to worship to to worship this great and mighty God to honor him with our worship to give him our heart this morning and to give him our all this morning in worship hallelujah we honor you Jesus we love you Jesus we call on your name this morning Jesus there is no other name that has power but your name my God hallelujah oh we bless you this morning
my God. You have never wavered and you will never waver for you are eternal in integrity, eternal in the standing of your promises and so we bless Yahweh. So we bless the ever living God as we dedicate every praise to you this morning on this Lord's day we declare my father it is the day of the Lord. We reverence you today. We come with thanksgiving and we come with praise today to honor you Lord and to bless your holy name we exalt you we exalt you and we want to say thank you Abba we want to say thank you Abba yet for another week yet for another day to come into the sanctuary of the Lord we thank you Abba for the bread that you lend us we thank you for the strength that we have we thank you we are lying for a season such as this that we can be part of a great move of God over this nation this day we honor the name that is king forever the name that is Lord forever the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth we exalt you we exalt you we exalt you king of kings lord of lords king of kings lord of lords you are our messiah our savior this day you are our deliverer you are the everlasting father we would say worthy 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 is the lamb of god that was slain that took away the sin of the world we bless you today we bless you today we just glorify you somebody give him praise he's worthy he's worthy he's worthy hallelujah 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 somebody shout hallelujah come on somebody shout hallelujah hallelujah give him praise we bless you we bless you we bless you lord whoa you are our hero you are our hero lord you are our hero There's no one like you Lord. Our hero Lord. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you. And so my father, we honor you in your word now. As we sit under the word, I thank you Lord that I decrease and you increase and may the word of the Lord again edify and may it encourage Lord may it launch your church in this season. Father, this day to grow great exploits. A church that will grow closer to you. A church that will never waver in this last days. but a church that will be dedicated and committed to a cause that they're willing to die for and so we thank you for your word now lord and we give you praise we release the blood in the service we sanctify this time and we declare it holy in jesus mighty name amen and amen god bless you it's so good to see you where you were last week i missed you i missed you guys amen hallelujah just to bring a We had an awesome report, an uh, awesome time <clears throat> in Cape Town. I think I only had a few hours sleep in three nights. It was just ministry and prayer and ministry and prayer. And, and, and really, God really came through for us. I celebrate that we at Christ Kingdom Ministries are uh, oversighting uh, the church that started up in Cape Town. Uh, I am Jesus Christ Ministries. We are the oversight as well as uh, Prophet Andre and the, uh, the prophetic ministry. but on the apostolic side that I'm giving oversight together with this church and and truly it is it is an honor and a privilege that God is just connecting us into nations and uh, by next year we hope to establish united in Christ uh, in Cape Town bringing many churches under the banner of Jesus Christ people are confused because there's no registration you can't even find google it and find it but we're saying we're meeting undercover we lay around lay around the names man We are a name and faceless people that will see a mighty move of God across the nations of the world. Can I yeah, give the Lord a praise? Hallelujah. And so this morning I want to minister to you something. It may sound the topic may sound strange, but the spirit is not of what God wants. And so we entitled the message I see a new Passover. In 2 Chronicles 35:18 The New Living Translation I'm going to read there just now. It says this here. Never since the time of prophet Samuel has there been such a Passover. None of the kings of Israel have ever kept a Passover as Josiah did. Wow. Well, 
Whatever, what an awesome statement of the Lord God Almighty, of someone's great achievement and great sacrifice to be recorded in the Bible for all generations to take note until the coming of Jesus Christ. The word of God was written for all season. It is written for our edifications. And so this morning, we will take note of what the Lord is saying to his church in the scripture. According to the scripture, Josiah celebrated a Passover of note, a celebration of sacrifice of love unto God that the everlasting God deemed so commendable and so worthy of praise to a standard of which was missing in the temple of the Lord for a very long time. There was much activity everywhere but no presence. Sacrifices and celebrations but not regarded by God. How sad is that? In 2 Chronicles 35 verses 7 to 9 we read the Passover and in, in summary it is King Josiah. The Bible says he celebrated a Passover that included 41,400 lambs and goats, oxen, bullocks sacrificed in that one moment. Can you understand how great the bloodshed and how great a sacrifice that 41,400 and that is including, you know, all, uh, across the lambs and goats and bullocks. I mean, this was really a huge offering. An offering by a young man at that time who began to understand the value of Yahweh and who he was. And he's going to say that if there was never an offering done before, I will do it to show the world and to show the people. By my offering, they need to know my love. And they need to understand how great this God is. It shows how great his love and honor of God is. In 2 Chronicles 35 2, it records this. And this is a Passover that I'm talking about. It records a Passover that included setting the priests and leaders in their position and duties. And encouraging them for the sacrifice in the house of the Lord. And setting the house of the Lord and setting the temple of the Lord back in order. A Passover that included that putting back the Ark of the Covenant in the house of the Lord. A Passover that included bringing back the presence of the living God into the house of the Lord. You read that in verse 3. And it shall not be a burden just on the Levites. And this is the key, but the whole house is responsible for the presence of the living God. A Passover that included putting back the book of the covenant that was missing from the pulpit for 73 years. There was no, no, no word of God on the pulpit in the house of the Lord. It was cast away and hidden, getting dust. Then what were the preacher, people preaching in that 17, 73 years without the Bible? What were they preaching? Maybe they didn't have cell phones then, but they were Googling something else. Following the ideologies and the rituals of man. That is why the house of God went into disarray. Because it was the intellect and the wisdom of man and the culture of man that took away the glory from the pulpit. That's why there was no signs, wonders and miracles. Beloved, what is a Passover? A Passover is a feast instituted by God in remembrance of the deliverance of Israel from Egypt. We hear this normally on a, 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 a Passover weekend. It is a celebration of Israel's liberation from Egypt's bondage. It was the anticipated penalty and sacrifice of Jesus Christ who was the final Passover lamb. But this is the key. It was a feast that brought honor and praise to God. It was a celebration that brought honor and praise to God. Like we're having a celebration here this morning. God was glorified in their worship. God was glorified even in the preaching. God was glorified in every area of service in the house of the Lord. This is a key. A celebration of honor. 
This was the key. This, this is what that brought glory and honor in our service and sacrifice. It was everything that was done to his glory in the highest integrity. <coughs> now concerning the prophet Samuel, Passover, it is written in 2 Chronicles 35, 18. Again, it says, never since the time and never since the days of the prophet Samuel had there been such a Passover. Wow. Now, why is God comparing the 16th king of Judah, King Josiah's Passover to prophet Samuel? Prophet Samuel must have did something of equal praise, something so noteworthy that God compares King Josiah's Passover to Prophet Samuel. To understand this word in 2 Chronicles 35, 18, and all God is saying and teaching, we must go back to the time of the Prophet Samuel and study his Passover celebration so that both these celebrations are linked and understand it is linked. Both these celebrations are linked with similar praise to God there is something vital there is something vital to learn from Samuel's Passover celebration for the Lord to go back 400 years from Josiah's sacrifice go back in time 400 years bypassing every other king bypassing every other service bypassing every other sacrifice and worship and go back 400 years to Josiah there's something the Lord is saying to us. Prophet Samuel reigned appro approximately 400 years before Josiah's rule over the kingdom of Jerusalem. It was Samuel who anointed David. It was Samuel who anointed Saul to be king. And out of that lineage of anointing David, and we see that Josiah is out of the lineage some 16 generations down the line. Beloved, there's something, and I'm just throwing this by the way. There's an act that sometimes we do now that is holy unto the Lord because it's under obedience. For Samuel was totally under obedience of God to anoint Saul and to anoint David. That's so much so, the glory of what happened now that generations later, out of that seed line came Josiah who did the biggest Passover offering that so glorified God that God went back to put a reward on Samuel. That's just a bansela. That's not my word. But uh, uh, there's something that Samuel did that God said, I see a Passover. I see a Passover worthy of praise like that of Josiah. Now, beloved, when you go back 400 years, when you go back to the time of Josiah, I mean, we checked, I, I checked, I even had to Google many times, I had to Google and to see, I'm not missing anything, reading and finding, but it is strange. There's no record in the Bible of Samuel's Passover celebration. And that's strange, yet God refers to prophet Samuel's service and to him as a Passover. What was God communicating to his people? And what is God saying to us as a church now? The prophet, the Passover prophet Samuel, God was not talking about the operation or the sacrifice or the shedding of blood. But there was a spirit of excellence, a spirit hard after God. There was a quality in the condition of a spirit of people, their values and their principles, their dedication and love and fear of God. That God said, I see a Passover. I see a celebration unto me. I see a sacrifice unto me that is so worthy, that is so worthy like the offering of my servant King Josiah. A people who followed the commands and the statutes of God. A people who believed and trusted him in all aspects. Their hearts were pure and the service unto God was pure. Their ways and their actions were pleasing to God. This is the new Passover. That when God looked down, he said, I see a Passover. I see a Passover worthy, worthy to be noted, worthy of praise. God can go back and say, not since the days of Samuel or not since the days of Josiah. I see a people. I see a people whose sacrifice is so pleasing unto me. A people who are dedicated. 
beloved, and committed. God is not looking for the shedding of the blood. There is enough blood shed in the house of the Lord. And maybe not physically, but spiritually. We are spilling blood of the innocent. We are tormenting the servants of the living God. And we're tormenting people who serve the living God. A people, but this is was a people whose time and offering was worthy. A people of righteousness and justice, whose hearts are pure and whose works are holy. That everything they did was validated in heaven. Everything they did was pleasing to God. Beloved, you are the stewards. You are stewards of the grace that is given to you. Read 1 Peter 4.10. You are stewards. You know what is a steward? You, you got to, you in charge of this glory of that gift. For his glory, it is not for you to control. It is not for you to have in siege. It's not for you to have it buried. Because God demands fruit. God demands fruit. What is he giving you? Where is the bonus of what he's giving you? You are stewards. What are you doing? Are you looking after it for his glory? Beloved, you know, this includes your tithes and offerings. And let me just throw this thing. I thought it was necessary. You know, everyone, I don't know, many people say that tithe is not there in the New Testament. But it glanced right there in the first gospel. It tells you in Matthew 23, 23, Woe to you, scribes and Pharisees and hypocrites, for you paid tithe of mint and anise and cumin. Anise and cumin, cumin is probably la jira. Anise is like the, the seeds. These are the, are the spices, you understand, that flavor the food. And he said, watch this here. He says this, you paid the tithe, but you have neglected the weightier matters of the law, justice, mercy, and faith. So don't just give your tithe and think that it's cool. It, there's greater things of your faith, your mercy, your love, and your service. Can I hear amen? Watch this here. Watch this. This is Jesus' word. These you ought to have done without leaving the others undone. Are you hearing this? What's that scripture? What's the scripture? Another interpretation. You ought to have justice, mercy, and faith without neglecting the tide. You should tide, but not neglect the important things of faith. Have we got that clear now? And have we got it clear that, listen to me, you are stewards of your gift. You're a steward. Pastor is a steward of the anointing. I don't hold God in siege and say, listen, I'm not going to do this because you didn't do that. I'm not preaching today because I didn't get my answer to my prayer. I, can you hear what I'm saying now? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A people who are born, God is looking for a people who are, who are born again, who live, how many of you are born again? Let me tell you something. If the church is born again, we'll have no challenges. If the church know what it is to be born again, to be sold out, that your old ways are crucified, that your old ways are dead, but you built by the Spirit, you filled by the Spirit, you filled your mind is set on Him. I tell you, our ways, our sacrifice, everything will be pleasing. Everything will be pleasing. It is time to be born again. It is time that the Lord looks down upon the church and said, I see a Passover. I see a celebration. I see a quality of a people that is sold out for my cause. A people that I can depend on. Everything we do is in honor of him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God sees a people no longer bound or limited. A people who see nothing is impossible with him. A new Passover is moving to a greater dimension of the kingdom of God being established. Now, what, what was different about Samuel's Passover? Now, I don't want to focus on the Old Testament. Let me tell you something, what it says in the New Testament about Samuel's Passover. In Hebrews, in Hebrews 11, 32 to 34, it says, And what more shall I say? Yo, for the time will fail me to tell of Pastor Daniel. No, no, sorry. The time will fail me to tell of Gideon and Barak and Samson and Jephthah. Yo. You know what? I identify with Jephthah. Cast out. Go to the land of Tob. Forgotten. Despised by the big boys. But the Lord brought the holy rejects. I call it holy. I make it nice. The holy rejects together to him. And you know what happened to Jephthah? Watch this here. And it's going to happen to you guys in this church. You know what happened to Jephthah? The day came when Israel could not fight his war. Every big name and fame could never do it. They went to top. They went to Sidnam Nochal. Not Amslango anyway. They went to Sidnam Nochal. They went to Sidnam. 
to find Jephthah and say, come and lead us in the final move of God over the enemy. Give the Lord a praise. Maybe I'm speaking prophetically. Anyway, I don't want to drift because Kevin said, don't drift. And so watch this here. Listen here. It says, and of Jephthah and also of David and Samuel the prophet. Why was Samuel the prophet and now the prophets put here in this place? What's this here? Why it is put in this paragraph where, what's this here? Where, where Samuel is recorded with Gideon. He's recorded with David who fought wars, who were fearless. Why was, why was Samuel put with David who gave his all? He gave his all. He gave his all. To be, I mean, he made Solomon look good. You understand? He gave his all to build the temple of the Lord. What's this here? Why was this Samuel put together in this place? And it says, who through faith subdued kingdoms, worked righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, quenched the violence of the fire, out of his weaknesses made strong, became valiant in battle, and turned to flight the elements. There's a prophet. You go back 400 years and didn't say anything. God says, yo, when I see him, when I see his heart, when I see his worship, I see him fighting a battle. When I see him praise, it's just like David going there in the front line. When I see Samuel worshiping, it's just like the highest worship coming to me. When I see Samuel bringing the sacrifices to me before my altar every day, I see a sacrifice of Josiah. When I see, I say to you, yes, he will be counted who wrought his fearless, who fought battles and warned. When God looked at prophet Samuel's service unto him, he likened unto the greatness of David and Gideon. Hallelujah. And Josiah's Passover. This, beloved, is a celebration. God is looking for his church. He's likened unto the greatness and achievements. This is a celebration. Not killing the lamb. Not killing the lamb. Not killing each other. This is a celebration. But a spirit and a condition that is worthy of praise. That when God looks down here on this pulpit, he does not only hear my voice, but he sees a heart. A heart that is sold out for a cause. A heart that is quaking on the inside. That Father, I'm not a man of great intellect. I don't even pronounce the words well. I don't know, they're in on video, they're going all over the nations. Lord, I'm quaking on the inside. That even when you gave me this word, that what the world is going to say, Lord, this is a strange title. Quaking. But the Lord sees the fear is in honor and praise of him. Hallelujah. Beloved, in this future time, let it be said of you and your ministry. Let it be said of this ministry, of Christ's kingdom ministries. It will be said, the Lord will say, what more can I say? But the time will fail me to talk of these members of Christ's kingdom ministry and all your other ministries out there. Wow. Beloved. This day I'm here to bring you to this inverted commas like united in Christ. To bring you into this place of a new Passover. The old was done on the cross but the new was a, a quality of a spirit that followed hard after the word in all service to the word of the living God. In your commitment, in your obedience. Come on. Let the Lord look down and say, I see a Passover. I see a celebration of note. I see a worship of note. You know what? Do me a favor. Every time you go into the house of the Lord to worship, worship like you're going to die tomorrow. Beloved, let me tell you, pain or no pain, arthritis or no arthritis, bad voice or no bad voice it, many of you don't even know I still have to go under operation of tall ligaments it is so sore but I tell you when it comes to raising my hand the doctor say I say it's painting but when he raises the Lord I say I don't feel nothing give give that when he comes and you die he says well done man this is my son man this is honor to me 
Can I hear amen? A people who are sold out for the kingdom cause. A people who live and breathe praise to me. A people who dedicate their lives in service and to bring glory to my name. That my presence, that my will says the Lord. That my call upon their lives is so precious and dear to them. That my name and fame is their desire. That my word is their obedience and trust. That my way is their walk. Hallelujah. A people who are sold out for the cause. Who walk in the fear of God. A people who display love and mercy and forgiveness. A people whose words are seasoned and actions are holy. <laughs> In Exodus chapter 12, the Lord says it is the Lord's Passover. In verses 1, 3, and 11. And it says, And now the Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, saying, verse 3, Speak to all the children of Israel, saying, Oh, on the 10th of it this month. Yo, it is a 10th. On this month, the 10th month. Let's just say that. On the 10th of this month, let every man take himself a lamb, according to the house of the Lord. Of his father, a lamb for the household. And thus you shall eat it with the belt on your waist and the sandals on your feet and the staff in your hand, and you shall eat it in haste, the Lord's Passover. Something so powerful, and we share this this time during the Passover, the similar scriptures there. There's something happened in the household of the Lord. Beloved, listen to me. Not in 430 years was a celebration at that time. Of the Lord's Passover in Egypt. Where for the first time. Every male. Every priesthood in his house. Took the staff in his hand. Our Bible is the same symbol of authority that we carry. They didn't have a Bible then. But the staff was a staff of authority. When every man that day. Took the staff in his hand. And he held it to celebrate. As we're going to celebrate communion on that day. To celebrate the Lord's Passover. When every man came in one accord. When every man stood that day in his household. In that spirit of obedience and unity. The heavens began to shake. And the heavens began to open. And in one moment, in one moment suddenly. The power of God began to move over Egypt. And God began to execute judgment upon the gods of Egypt. And the people that celebrated were set free. Beloved, I'm saying to you this day, if you want to know what a Passover, a Passover is based on the spirit of unity. When the household of God can come in unity. Where brother is not against brother that you become your brother's keeper. There's no art, there's nothing, there's no difference. When we stand, we stand for one cause. And that is for the glory of our God. When we fight and pray, we pray for one cause. For the glory of, of the Lord. We don't pray for each other to fall. We don't curse each other. We don't want each other. We don't set traps so others could stumble. And many times we spend more time laughing the one that falls. Instead of about celebrating, honoring God. And say, Lord, help him. One member of the family suffers, the entire suffer. I'm saying God is setting up a kingdom. There is a new breed that walk as a father, son, and the Holy Spirit. We begin to walk one and undivided. This is a quality, a quality not by our speech, a quality that is internal, a quality that is righteous, a quality that fears God, a quality that moves and breathes. According to the way of the Lord God Almighty, everyone ordained priesthood came to their function. Beloved, I say to you this day, it is time. It is time the priesthood comes in unity. At times, brothers, don't think you're greater than the other. I don't care how anointed you are to preach. You are the same as the one who is setting the table for the communion. You are bringing fulfillment to the ordained position. Can I hear amen? We all want to be wiped our foreheads. We all want more crowns and more crowns upon us and think we are greater than the other. Come on. The Lord was looking for a Passover that is pure. Listen to me. Don't bring a lamb that is sick. 
Don't bring an attitude that is sick. Don't bring an attitude that is defiled, that is marked, pre-planned. I will show you the church. I will show you. I will show pre-planned. Beloved, do me a favor. It is not for church. It is not for us. It is to your God. Is he going to accept that? Is he going to accept that? Are you polluting things to our God? Is he going to accept that? And so in the sanctuary of the Lord, many of them say, no, we in the house of the Lord. Yeah. And say, why we need to spend so much money in the temple of the Lord? Hey, come on. Come on. You want to live in sealed houses? You want to live in a multi-billion house? Come on. You even got water in your, to wash underneath your tires and your car and all these things. But the house of the Lord. Spend one rand more, make it look nice to, to the glory of our God. We got a problem. We have a problem. We have a problem. You know what? People have a special anointing when it comes to the things of God. I'm talking about a bad anointing now. God wants to see a quality. Enough of the flesh. Enough of your way. Listen to me. I want to I, I say that how many of you know the Lord is coming soon? The one world order has been started to be established in, in 2016. And they said it's ready to show its face in 2030. One world order. Well, there are one world government run the whole world. Then you know how close we are. Then you know how close. And we're still working out. We're still working out whether we serve the Lord or not. We're still working out our attitudes. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, help us. Help me firstly that I don't fail you. Start with me. Start with my pastor. Start with our leaders. Before you touch the world, touch, start with us. That Father, this day will be a quality that will serve you. A condition that you say, I see a Passover. Help us in our weakness. Let us not be an abomination to your glory and to your honor this day. Help us, I pray. And let us not fall. Let us not fall. Let us not fall. Beloved, I say to you, you know what is a quality of a spirit? A quality of the spirit that has a, uh, has a solution. Not a complaint. Come on. I pray a spirit of excellence. The Lord, let the Lord of heavens and earth say to the multitude, take note, take note of my beloved. You are a chosen people. And I can say to you, and I prophesy over you, and to you who are listening, all you churches that seem to be, all the small churches called small in, but big in the heart of the Lord. When the people speak against you and also against this ministry, when you are despising the eyes of others, when you are not regarded amongst great names, the heavenly also shouts out, just wait and see, for the end will speak. Just wait, just wait for what I'm about to do. If you are not happy where they are now, stick around. Stick around, for there's a glory that is coming upon them that is second to none. Give the Lord a praise, somebody. Come on. I say in the anointing you received, in the anointing that you have, in the grace that you are graced, what heights do you want to reach? Leave past in the vision. What height do you want to reach? Where is your destination? It is up to you. You choose, you follow. No crash landing. Keep the engines revved up. Service, come on. How you keep the engines revved up? In your worship, in your service, in your fasting and praying and seeking. Every time we preach the word, another apostle will say, you don't have to fast. You're anointed with oil. You know what? I listen to every apostle stories. If I had to listen to everyone, will not celebrate communion. Will not have now. Please, man. One got a problem with heaven. This one got a problem with this. And then I say, what do we preach to people? We're going to tell them, no, there's another heaven, another earth. This one will melt away. This one going to come. The poor always is going back to where he was. Tell him simple hell, heaven and hell. When he comes into the house of the Lord, we teach him. Too, too much intellect. No souls are saved. Hallelujah. I meet so many of them. As soon as a demon is jumping, they are jumping away. Serious. All the head knowledge, but no power. We operate. Come on, let's. We must operate from the fear of God and the spirits of excellence. Promotion coming from the Lord. 
Promotion comes and destiny is attained when you walk in the way of the Lord. Many want to be part of, let me tell you, many will come and be part of this ministry and hold our hands up. And I want to say to you people, if you want to touch the nation of the world, get your act together. Get your ideologies and all your concepts right. Yeah. If you want to be evangelist to nation, stop evangelizing here in Sidlam. And you listening to me evangelize in your district. Come on. Everyone wants to touch the world. But we can't touch the house yet first. Come on. That word will happen when you start doing the local. Can I hear amen? This word is not to condemn you. It is, it is setting you right for a great day. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. Beloved. Don't limit yourself. You can only reach the position that you desire. What consumes your mind and what consumes your spirit, it is that which will control you. It will control the overcome outcome. So don't let things of the world consume you. The order of the things of the flesh consume you. The church of Jesus Christ, the sanctuary of the Lord is holy unto the Lord. Can I hear amen? In 2 Corinthians 3.18, we're trying to wrap it up. I'm only halfway. But I'm going to skip now. It says God is constantly shifting his church from one level of glory to another. And I want to say don't stagnate. Yesterday is dead and gone, but today is a new day. Don't stagnate. Can I hear amen? Don't live in your past victories. Neither live in your past failures. Today is a new day. Can I hear John 17, 4? Jesus said, I brought glory to you upon the earth. What an awesome statement. Come on. Come on. What an awesome statement. It's a summary of everything. I brought glory to you upon the earth. Whether I'm playing the keyboard, whether I'm doing, I'm, I'm preaching, whether, whatever I'm doing, I brought, what an awesome statement of one who sold out for God. This is our call. This, this is our duty. This is our ordination. This is the celebration and service God is looking for. Which I am referring to as a new Passover. Beloved, you've been graced to do so and you're graced to do it till the end. But are you willing to walk faithful to the end? You can only reach the dimensions that you believe. It does not come, it's not easy. Passion is a driving force. Your love for Jesus and pleasing him is the driving force. Can I hear amen? Hallelujah. Fulfilling vision is a driving force. This morning I want you, each one of you to say, Lord, I desire to leave a legacy. I tell you what, I don't want to die a nobody. The Lord better keep me alive because I want to touch the whole world. I want to see many thousands coming to the knowledge and saving grace of Jesus. We only got started. Don't get frightened about my gray hair. God knows every strand that I lost. I'm getting bald. I rebuke this baldness in Jesus' name. Come on. Like David. Psalm 71, 18. Now when I'm gray-headed, O oh Lord, forsake me not. Until I show the strength unto this generation. And the power of everyone to come. That's what I live for. I'm not going to die for nothing. We ain't done nothing yet. But I tell you what, we're going to be the patriarchs of the time now. You understand? When the Lord wrote about Elijah and Elisha, and he wrote of the things, there's a new word. Look at the book that is written in heaven right now. Our names are going to be there. Our names are going to be there with great exploits. This is an awesome desire of an individual. To see the greatness and the might of God not forgotten. Are you understanding that? Beloved, if this nation is going to fail, if this generation is going to fail, we fail. The blood will be on our shoulder, not only Pastor Neil. Make a commitment. Make a commitment. Now we'll make sure whatever we do in our service, in our worship, in our offering, whatever we do, we will make sure this, this generation and the generation will come will never fail the living God. 
David pleaded to God not to remove him until he made a difference. And that is one of my prayers. I make a diff- Lord, don't take me out till I make a difference in this generation. <coughs> Excuse me. I don't have COVID, by the way. Hallelujah. Bible says when a man is thirsty, let him drink. Let us be examples. Examples of love. You know how easy it is to love? Because you got Jesus and you got the Holy Spirit. Do you know how easy it is to love and not have an argument? Do you know how easy it is to love? We make it so difficult. I learned only later in my life after many gray hairs. I, I'll ask the Lord to help me. And one of the things I asked him to help me is I wanted to own a freeway. Uh, uh, now it's with no tall roads, with no talls in between, right? I wanted to have a freeway with no talls in between. And the Lord says, yes, I will grant it to you, my son. Where would you like this freeway? without tolls. I said between this ear and this ear. Come on. We don't have to allow it to stop. Let it go past. Because you know who you are. And let me tell you something. We wrestle not against flesh and blood. In the highest hour, in the highest thing, the the Lord will bring an irritation, not the Lord, the enemy will bring an irritation. How many of you know in ministry, if there's anything that is guaranteed, if there's anything that is guaranteed, like like the communion table, like Jesus died, is coming again. If there's anything equal to Jesus coming back as a guarantee, death is one of them. The second one is irritation. And it comes from free, Calvin. You don't ask. It comes for free. You're serving the Lord. Hallelujah. Then we got, there's an irritation. But you know what? Come on, man. I just put that lotion on me. Anti sting. Whatever they call it. Done. The mosquito is. Can't touch. Come on. Beloved, listen. You know what? God, you know, in the last days, we, many of us, Listen to me. You are a remnant. The reserved of God. To understand it, especially in a time that I can have my coat, then I know I have to stop. Because we got communion. Forgive me for not just going too much. I think there was so much I prepared to say. But there's a remnant, the reserved of the Lord. Elijah in all his glory. And all his attitude to, came to the Lord and said, there's no one. I said, excuse me? The Lord said, excuse me? Uh, uh, they, excuse me? Uh, they, excuse me? Uh, excuse me? I want to say to you, if, God, if you got that accident, the Lord said, excuse me? You think you're going to leave and the ministry will fall? Excuse me? You think you're not going to serve. You think a ministry is going to fall. If it is of the Lord. A ministry will never fall if it is of the Lord. The Lord said to Elijah. Listen to me. You my boy. But you may say I've got 7,000 waiting. Therefore do never in your anointing hold the house of God in siege. Imagine Jesus. Last minute before the cross. Now last minute before the cross. Come on. Before he, even before he can get the lashing. He came to the father and said, hey, listen to me. I'm going to be the dawn here. Now you listen to me, father. You Listen to me now. You see me, I got that anointing to take the stripes now. You said, you know, I'm the word of God. And he threatens the father. And he holds the father in siege for his sacrifice to die on the cross of Calvary. I place you in the same standard. If you come and hold the house in siege. I want to make it clear. If you have a problem and want to hold a house in siege and find a place that you will not hold in siege. So the glory of God will never be hindered 
in the house of the Lord. Is that cool? Amen. And only for my leaders, not for you out there. If my leaders hold me in seat, any of my leaders, I will clap them. I'll shake them up. We can say that in the house. Come on, wave. Come on, get don't get so serious. The pastor lost his anointing now. <laughs> Quickly, 1 Corinthians 1 26, Colossians 4 17. It says, Consider your calling and take heed to your ministry. Check it out. Pay attention. Come on. Come on. I like 1 John 2 6 says, uh, uh, He who says he abides in me ought himself also walk just as Jesus walked. Just as Jesus lived upon the earth, there was a persistent determination. You need to walk in the same. John 1, 1, what it says, in the beginning was a word, the word was with God, and the word was God. If you don't have a relationship with this Bible, you don't have a relationship with Jesus. Relationship is based on the word. The limitation of your relationship is based on the, this word. You want, you want, you want to serve the Lord. You want a relationship. Come on. It is time to know the word. No leader, no matter who you are, without the word, without the understanding this word, you will never serve in the highest capacity. Let us be people of substance. Let us be people of quality. How great is the kingdom to you this day? You know, people can tell if you're crazy. Moses said to the children of Gad, I better come down now, so. He said to the children of Gad and Reuben, and many of them, we have many Gads, tribes of Gads and Rubens in the church. When it comes for the final launch and to do great things, they want to sit down. I don't want to go to war. Moses said to them, shall your brother go to war while you sit and do nothing? He goes later to say, why do you, why do you demotivate the people? Why? Why do you discourage my people from going to fight? You that the bearers of bad news. You are the bearers of bad news. You make everybody discouraged. Come on, people. In these last days, don't be bearers of bad news and discouragement and stop the move of God. In these last days, understand, shall your brother go to war? When there's a mighty move of God, you want to do nothing. You want, listen to me, come on, be faithful in every aspect of your life, even to your offering, be faithful. In your worship, be faithful. You know why? So there'll be a mighty move of God upon the face of the earth. I pray for you, my beloved. When the Lord sees, you know what? I say to you as a leader of your house, as a leader of the church, as a leader of your family, if you were the only one in society, will they know Jesus? What will be the standard of the church by your leadership? What will be the standard of the church by your leadership? If you think it's going to be bad, if the next generation will fail, would the next generation do greater by your leadership now? Where is your enthusiasm? You know what? Days are numbered. Listen to me. Days are numbered. God wants you to have great things. And I know I'm delaying now. But God wants you to have the great things in the world. But more than that, the days are numbered. The coming of the Lord is soon. If you don't set yourself right to serve Him, come on. It'll be a sad day. It'll be a sad day. And some of you be careful. We can do much. But if it's not from the heart, when the fire of God hits it, there'll be nothing left for all eternity. So whatever we do, let it count for something. Amen. When the Lord looks in this church, you know what I'm pushing you? He's going to say, hey, you know what? I see a pastor. I see a pastor. Not since the days of Josiah. I see a pastor. A people dedicated and committed for a cause. Let us stand. Come on. Hallelujah. Give the Lord a praise, somebody. Don't let this word pass over you now. Hallelujah. Every head bowed and eyes closed right now. Is there anyone, you heard the message and your heart has grown cold. Is there anyone today who has never declared their, their lie, declared Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior? 
Some of you, before you come to the communion table, if there's things in your life you want to repent, repent, say, Lord, forgive me. Because I'm saying today's a new day. I'm saying don't let yesterday's failure hold you. Can I hear amen? Come on, come on, come on. This is not about judgment. This is about deliverance. This is about going forward. Can I hear amen? If there's anyone says, hey Lord, you know what? I've been failing, but today I'm coming back. I'm coming back in union to the communion table. I'm coming back in union with you. If there's anyone that says, Lord, I want to recommit my life to Jesus. I'd like to do it quickly. If you can just, with every head bowed and ask, raise your hand. You just raise your hand and put it down. Say, I rededicate my life. Raise it high so I can see. I, I'm, 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 I'm being blocked by the tall people here. Anyone else? Raise it high so I can see. Yes, there, there, there. Anyone else? Let the Lord, come on, don't be afraid. Just raise it up, put it down. After you raise it up, put it down. Thank you. Hallelujah. Can everyone just pray with me? Say, Almighty God and Heavenly Father, this day we come to you in Jesus' name. Father, we heard your word today. And Lord, we are encouraged and we are challenged. I repent for any quality of my service that was negligent. And did not bring praise. But today Lord. I choose. To come back. To give you my best. I repent. For not honoring you. And serving you. The days of my life. But today. I'm coming back. To honor you. And today I declare. Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Is my Lord and Savior. I bless you now. Glory to you Lord. As I ask this in Jesus name. Amen. I want you to know this morning. You are so precious. You are so special. That God is challenging you always. To be the best. Because of the rewards. That he wants you to attain. At the end like any father. The father knows. That I want my son to be the best. I want my kids to be the best. Uh, you may be doing good, but God says not good enough. I want an A. Can I hear? A push for an A. So when you get a C, it is cool. Is that all right? You push for an A. Don't study for a C, you'll get a Z. So if that's what the Lord, the Lord wants you to be the best. And so this day, my father, as we gather as the priesthood around this table, we acknowledge you, Jesus, and we give you praise. We sanctify these emblems of this bread and Lord of this communion, of this wine. We declared holy unto our God. And so in the same night in which he was betrayed, he took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, take eat. This is my body that is broken for you. As often as you will eat of it, you'll do it in remembrance of me. And after his supper, he took the cup and he said, this is the cup of the New Testament in my blood. As often as you drink of it also, you do it in rem remembrance of me. And often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show, you do it till the end. And so Father, I bless this congregation. We eat in remembrance of you. And today, today, there will be a shifting. Today, there will be a cleansing. Today there will be a strengthening as they will take communion. I bless it now in Jesus' name. Won't we give it out? Thank you for the cross, Lord. And to you, beloved, at home, we got time. I'd like you to join Thank us for communion. Take any juice and take some bread and I bless it. I declare it holy in the mighty name of Jesus. Break bread with your children. Break bread with your family. And say today, Lord, I want to celebrate a new Passover. I want to celebrate, Lord, in my worship and my praise. And also, I want to celebrate in honoring you this morning, even in this communion as I remember you in my home. So I pray right now, take a moment. Take them on quickly and get your communion together. We'll partake together. God bless you.
This morning we give you thanks. We are forever grateful, forever and ever grateful that you were broken, that we might be whole. Thank you for the cross. Thank you for the shed blood on Calvary. Thank you, my God, this day. Even as we partake of this bread, we remember your broken body. We remember you, Jesus, this day. And so we eat in remembrance of you. Let us eat right now. You at home, join us as we celebrate. Eat right now. Thank you for the cup. Thank you for the shed blood of the Lamb. Oh, how awesome is the blood. It's never lost its power. And as I, we drink today in remembrance of you, may the glory of, and the victory of Calvary, by the stripes of Jesus, we are healed. May there be a washing and a cleansing on the inner man. May there be a building up of strength. My God, this day for the last days that we live, for our time upon the earth, my Father, it will be pleasing to you. Jesus, as you please the Father, help us to please the Father and to please you, my Jesus. Help us. Help us as a church. If there's anything we desire is to please you. That our worship, that our everything that we'll do will be praised to you, my God. You are in us, Christ in us, the hope. Give us that hope and the strength to do it to the end. And I pray today for everyone who heard the word. It is not a time of discouragement. But it's a time, Lord, where we come and say, yes, Lord. We are rising up, my Father, in our days. To, to Lord, to bring glory to your name and to bring honor to your name. Bless each one with supernatural abilities. That, that anointing, let there be an anointing upon the grace upon them. In this season, we'll be good stewards of that anointing. Come on, let us drink in remembrance of him and all that he's done for us. We are free today in Jesus' name.
You may take your seat for a moment. Thank you. To us on the internet, if you're still there, God bless you. Looking forward to join us on Sunday. And also we have a guest speaker on Sunday, so you are there. Please remember, get connected or visit us. We see you on Sunday. We see you on Tuesday night, sorry, at our time of prayer and fasting.